It's interesting to see how quickly the tables turn in the modern day movie culture. You see, back in 2019, almost four whole years ago, Shazam was released, and although it wasn't a huge culture changing event, most people really liked it, and it made enough money to warrant a sequel. The first Shazam was seen as a breath of fresh air from DC's darker Snyderverse tone, and even from the more serious high stakes of Marvel, which was right at its climax with Infinity War the year prior, and Endgame less than a month away. Flash forward to 2023, and Shazam! Fury of the Gods is getting hammered by critics and is flopping hard at the box office. And it really is a shame, because Shazam 2 isn't a bad film. It is a nice, fun time that unfortunately plays it too safe. When looking at Shazam! Fury of the Gods with a critical eye, you just kinda say to yourself, well that was fun. And I did find a little bit more out of this movie than it just being fun, but that's basically the gist of it. The movie picks up around two years after the first film, and something that I appreciated about the sequel is how it uses the events from the end of the first film to set up the threat, that threat being the Daughters of Atlas. And while they aren't amazing villains, I did enjoy them quite a bit, and I even thought that they were slightly better than Dr. Savannah from the first Shazam film. Each sister has their own distinct personality traits that sets them apart from each other, and their difference of opinions make for some fun dysfunction in their sisterhood. When it comes to the Shazamily, which is just Billy's foster family, they're fine. Most of Billy's foster siblings don't really get much to do. They're mostly there for comic relief and get some pretty good fun moments, but there's really not much there character-wise. But Freddy is a great standout, and Billy himself is pretty good. Although Billy does spend most of his time as Shazam, but you can still understand and feel his personal struggle and his fear of losing his family. One of the things that I really liked was the humor. It's been a while since a comic book movie made me genuinely laugh, but Shazam 2 is very funny, and its humor is clever, and in most cases it actually comes organically from the events and the characters themselves. On the visual end of things, Shazam 2 looks pretty great. The visual effects and the action set pieces, as well as the action scenes themselves, are a huge step up from the first film but I'm afraid that that is one of the few things that are actually better than the first film. Most everything, while it's still good, is just not as good. Even the action, while it was more creative visually and the effects were better than the first film, just weren't as good. They weren't as compelling because they were missing something. There's just something about the second film where fighting an army of mythical creatures and having a one-on-one -on -one with a dragon just isn't as compelling as the first film, where we had to see Billy running for his life from Dr. Savannah, or saving his foster siblings from the seven deadly sins. As fun as the action in the second film can be, it's just lacking something. And I think the main problem lies with that word I just used. Fun. Shazam 2 focuses so much on being a likable fun adventure, that it almost feels like there are no stakes. And that is because, for the most part, there really are none. Part of the problem is that the trailers and promotions gave way too much of the film away that you really couldn't believe that anybody was in any danger. But the main problem is with the film itself. Because of how fun and safe the movie plays things throughout the film, you never really feel like anyone is in danger of dying or staying permanently dead. And this undercuts the emotional moments a great deal. So while I thought that Shazam 2 was a decent film with a lot of fun and a good character arc for Billy, it's hard to actually care because the movie never really feels like there's any reason to care. There's no stakes. Even though I think Shazam 2 is the better film, even Black Adam gave you some sense that the characters might be in some sort of danger and one of the characters actually ends up dying in that movie. To sum everything up, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a pretty well-written, fun film that
that takes two steps above its predecessor with its villains and its special effects, but it also takes three steps down, and maybe even more, with its main characters not being quite as well written, the stakes not feeling real enough, and the emotional moments just not hitting as hard. Although Billy and Freddy do get some decent character development and grow as characters, and most of the moments in the movie are good, it just doesn't quite reach the heights that it needs to actually matter or become more than just a generic, fun superhero movie. With as many problems as this movie had, it's still a pretty decent film and I enjoyed it a lot. I am Luke Film Boss, and I give Shazam Fury of the Gods an 81% in quality, an 83% in enjoyment for an overall score of 82%. And yes, I did think Shazam Fury of the Gods was better than Black Adam. So, while I might have given that film an 83 in the past, I'm going to be lowering Black Adam's score. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help you be on the lookout for more videos from Luke Film Boss.